TradeMoneyATM.com. So that was part, that was the issue here where like somebody like myself learned, you know, who's just learning about what, what a short is, what options are, how they work. So what, like 136% short interests in GameStop. So the, the first question somebody like me is going to ask is how do you, how do you sell more than a hundred percent of whatever. <laughs> and I know, and I know it's, but it's part of the, the, the mathematical game that that's played right on. All right. So well, let, let's go to definitions first right. to understand so explain, each yeah, thing. You know, right. Right. So a short interest is the number of shares, right. Of a stock that have pretty much like been sold by an investor or hedge fund, but have not yet been, covered like they haven't you know or closed out right right uh, when you look at a percentage a short interest is the number of shorted shares divided by the number of shares outstanding so if it's a hundred percent short then that's as max as it could go you can't really go above a hundred percent mostly right right now all right so so all right you got a shorter share you go to the broker you find out you know what the shares are, are available for you to borrow and, and you on, borrow those shares. Me, now why would you short a share so maybe- uh because you're you're basically saying that uh so let's say like in in the case this case when you research uh-huh. uh gamestop was at forty dollars and the in you know the researchers uh the hedge funds believe that you know it'll go to twenty dollars now they also put out a report and so it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy right. if I say, I think, and, and I'm trusted on top of that, that the value of GameStop is $20 and people look and it's 40, they're going to, oh my gosh, uh, if I hold on to this, I'm going to lose. And so they start selling and as they sell, it drives the price down. And that means uh, because I'm shorting it, the going down, I, I basically sold, I make the difference from $40 to $20 price that it ends up being, you know? Um, at some future date, you have to buy back the shares, right? Mm-hmm. And all you're looking to do is buy it at a cheaper price than when you sold the shares. You, you know, you shorted it at 40, you buy it back at 20. However, if you short it at 40 and it goes to 400, you lose <laughs> 300 and you lose whatever, you know, it's right. a higher thing. But, but here's also so how that works. The opposite. So when you're, when you're shorting something, you're, you're basically going to benefit if it goes down. Correct. But okay. but on top of that, here's something people have to also consider. Uh-huh. Let's say, and, I, and I'll ask you a question. Let's say you have a, a stock, right? Let's GameStop, right? Let's just <laughs> keep it like people are listening to us, right? Yes. So GameStop is 40 bucks. What's the lowest price GameStop could go to? Zero. Yes, they could go to zero. They can go out of business. Mm-hmm. So if you put forty dollars into GameStop, you buy one share of GameStop for uh, forty bucks. How much can you lose if you know you're not? Um, and I mean, there's other ways that you could increase the amount of things. But let's say you just go yeah. uh, in direct and you, you forty bucks. You buy forty dollars worth of GameStop. Uh, How much can you lose? Forty dollars. Right. Now, if you short it at 40. <laughs> right, here's the well, interesting, well, yeah, here's where the, right. yeah, right, right. Right, so before we even, I'm going to backtrack that question and ask another question. Hmm. How high can a stock go? What like, what dollar amount? What dollar amount, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is there a law as to, no, is there can a, a stock, right, there's no ceiling. Right, right? No ceiling, right. Okay, now, you take $40 and there's no ceiling. If GameStop goes to forty thousand dollars, you have to pay the difference. Right. If you're the the hedge fund, yeah, or the individual, the individual right? Or your your loss on shorting something could far exceed what you put into it. Right. Because you have to cover it. You have to cover that. Right. Yeah. Um. So that's basically you know what happened here. 
yeah. With the, with so, that so, situation. but, but now, now here, there's the, there's something where the, and people should check out the U.S. Security Exchange Commission regulation information on a government uh, site, right? Yeah. Um, but basically, in order to prevent what we're talking about, which is like a na- naked short selling. Um, with naked short sale, the broker allows the customer to do a short sale transaction without actually arranging to borrow the shares beforehand. Right. This leads to market disruptions where some exceptions to the regulations, most brokers stop regular retail customers from selling the stock short if they can't obtain shares to borrow. However, <laughs> this is uh, motley, right? Even without a naked short sale, it's theoretically possible for short interest to exceed 100%. The reason has to do with the nature of the transaction itself. Right. Take a situation involving four investor, one of them get GameStop and the other broker has an agreement that allows the broker to lend her shares to a short seller, right? It lends them to Bob or someone else, you know, who subsequently sells them in hopes that the price will fall. Another investor steps in and buys or borrows those shares from Bob. However, you know, the the initial person has no way of knowing that those shares have also been borrowed from another person. (laughs) Right? So So it's kind of like double... Yeah. uh, So so theoretically, that's how, and that's how they explain how can you sell more? Because again, for somebody like me, how are you you know, selling more shares than there actually are, right? 100% of the shares technically are, are, you know, right. They're, are going, they're you know, out are, there. Are, they're they're out gone. there. So right. again, but, so that's but the, then, theor- the theory behind that is that, well, the transactions happen a certain way and, you know, you can get to where you, you sold more. Right. right. So, so okay. if let's say like, what is the percentage up? I don't, I don't recall what it is now. I'm not looking at it, but let's say it was 30% up, like 130. Then that prob that's just like saying the hedge funds, right? Mm-hmm. Don't actually, they, they don't actually possess those shares. Right. right? right. It's just digital. Right. Right. And they've been doing this um, for a long time. Now, what, also happened with people is that they told other people hey look call your broker or just do not permit your shares to be borrowed right Right. because if they could borrow the shares they could kind of like stop gap themselves from losing they could you know Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so now there there was well it's it's beyond 100 percent. so the borrowing thing shouldn't really be there when you think about it but you know Right. The game for the elite may not be the same game for right. the retail investor who's considered a big dummy, which <laughs> So that's know. another so that's another funny part of this to me is that they basically the scenario that they're putting out there is that yes, a bunch of uh, a bunch of these inexperienced people that don't know what they're doing, but they got together and like, you know, and attacked attacked the system right that if you look around you know you see the headlines you know you see the headlines so my thing is which one is it all right how does somebody that don't know what they're doing (laughs) organize this you know this great you know attack and cause so much mischief and you know looking at the headlines that's it's funny to me how they're you know how they're yeah they're painting the the small uh they're painting the citizens as the enemy. Right, and um, that's the one thing that's but, clear but, is that yes, right. the enemy but here is. They've changed that though. <laughs> if, you, if you look now, they've changed that because they. I guess enough people kind of saw it for what it was. Um, the rules are different, well, and they, so what are they saying? Now? The hedge fund. Well, well, now they're just saying that the hedge funds have been able to get away with this for a long time. Sure. And they've had an advantage that's, with how they were able to function. That's the whole point. And now. You know, even when you look at it, it's kind of like a old. It, it started out like you, you go his, historical, right? It was a, a small group of people that were able to trade within them, themselves back and forth and drive up prices or do what they control the market. Let's mm-hmm. simplify it. Not stay on this thing for like ten hours, right? Right, right, right. Um, they and then it opened up to the public. If you really go back and check. What actually happened was <laughs> these 
people that we look at as smarter, better than us, richer than us, wealthier than us, which they are financially so. Um, but they're just like us, except they're in a big house with more money. Right. And they had the advantage of uh, cronyism, I guess. You know, they, sure. they were connected to each other, and so they work together. Right. Um, and they implement things for their benefit. They uh, use their money and capital to support laws that empower them. They buy into media companies. You ever notice a lot of billionaires own interest in media enterprises? <laughs> so exactly. I don't. I'm not exactly. saying that they're manipulating the media, exactly. but uh, you know, if I own you and you're talking bad about me, maybe if I said, "Hey, buddy, uh, you can't say something bad about me," maybe it'll carry more weight than someone who yeah. doesn't. That doesn't, own your, that doesn't pay I mean, your, yeah, it doesn't pay right, your, right. It was not your boss, <laughs> doesn't right? Cut your check. Oh, right, exactly. Right, <laughs> ultimately, right. So, but they created the situation because sure. you have a scenario now where people are sitting there, and we have all this technology. All, we have the ability to not go to the bank and let them handle it. Not go to a broker. We could just press a button and buy AMC on our phone or on our right. computer, right. Right? right? And now. If you're old school, a hundred years ago, you're like, well, the general public doesn't understand, right? right? Like, I didn't know what a short was. I didn't uh, know uh, you could leverage, you know, borrow money and buy stocks. I didn't, yeah. there's a lot of things I didn't know and we all didn't know, but here's the funny thing now. They have things that allow people to learn, but literally books or or video is on the internet. Right, your man Pearl Q in the building for the ATM podcast. Be sure to hit that like button and hit that bell notification button to be uh, notified every time we drop a new uh, episode. All right, follow on all social media at Pearl Q ATM podcast, trademoneyatm.com. We'll see you guys in the next video. Trademoneyatm.com.